Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome to Maggie Season 8, I believe is what we're on. Uh, we are in the top cut, doing round robin this season instead of just the straight uh, bracket. So we've got a round robin match here between uh, JDG 3 on 4 and Kidman XDX. And this should be an awesome game. Um, let's get in here and let them get going. I don't have the decks to start with this time. But I do think we have open hand, which I know some people <laughs> are not as stoked about. But, you know, it's just a different experience each time. So we'll get some with and some without, I'm sure, this season. These top cuts, but we have it this time. Uh, Also, maybe give us uh, a glimpse into the mind of JDG, who is playing Chandra the Probably Complex, which should be super, super fun. Uh, it's a crazy deck. Um, JDG piloted it to uh, second place in the Canadian Nationals, I believe, if I remember that correctly. Um, also a favorite of his for uh, Adaptive. And then from Kidman XDX, we've got... Weakim Runplay Guardian. So this is a Coda deck uh, with Keyhammer, Double Miasma. Let's see, it doesn't look like it has anything too crazy with the Keyhammer combo, but it is looking fast. Double Deep Probe is going to be really interesting. Oh, we do not have the hands. Is that right? Yeah. Maybe we did that wrong. Oh, okay. JDG asked for... Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, we're good. Flocks, all of them. That is right. Welcome, Sloppy Lab Work. Um, excited to be here. This is this is great stuff. I'm always, uh, always excited for this season. One day, I will actually be in <laughs> the top cut. But didn't quite make it again this time. Uh, felt a lot better about the season, but... Um, still just barely got beat out by if i remember right you uh and quick draw so fun stuff all right let's get into the game though so we've got uh the oops animator down already for oh let me hide my webcam too so we can see well actually if we can't see the hands i'll leave the webcam up uh, i'll move it so you can smaller so you can see the deck list though as we're going here there we go What's up, Doc? Welcome in. Um, sorry, they're going fast here, so let me let me catch us up on the game here really quick. We do have the animator down for uh, Chandra, which is a big deal. Uh, do we have any artifact control? Not sure if we do. No artifact control is going to be a big deal, but there is a lot of just other disruption and control coming from uh, Leakim. But we do have an early lead for JDG here. Not normally a deck that kind of gets out fast as often. Uh, it's very much kind of that um, kind of build up uh, the engine building thing. But we have a really big swing here from Lee Kim from uh, Kid Man doing a lot of that shadow stealing. So we've got Bait and Switch, Ghostly Hand, and a Miasma just for the Amber Pips going to 7 Amber there. We'll see if JDG has an answer. Uh, welcome in, not tonight. I'm so excited for this game. It should be really good. I don't know if I've played uh, Kidman in Aggie before. I don't remember if we've been in the same group or not, but um, congrats to both of these players, of course, for making it here. I feel like this was a rough season. There was, you had to get a, a lot of games through um, to make it into the top cut. And then there's always the uh, tiebreakers as well. Okay, so JDG does have to let that key go through, but stops any reaping happening uh, and gets a few more creatures down. Oh, tough play. Is that what... I wasn't quite sure. I should have double-checked how the exactly how the top cut was working. Is that what you played yesterday, um, JT? Was that a play-in round, or was that the round robin? I should have, I need to look a little bit more exactly how this top cut is being played. I kind of 
I missed that. I'm just here for I'm just here to watch the games. <laughs> oh, and this is a play in round as well. OK, I thought. Oh, so maybe uh, so, so it is Swiss, though, right? Swiss makes me think that everyone is playing several games. Maybe I'm just off on that. Um, a little bit more of the control coming out for uh, Kidman's deck, getting the shaffles down and the charrette here. Saw that guilty hearts. Gone Goozle, discard secure droid. Not a huge deal for JDG. I don't think that's super critical card for the deck. Um, but we do go into star lines here, so we're gonna get some good uh, bouncing at least on this blast shielding with the damage pip. Tough call. He's probably trying to think right now exactly what he wants to hit with that damage pip. Goes on shaffles because he's going to be able to bounce it and then kill the um, shaffles. So if it, if it is Swiss, is that a play in round or is that like, like you're not out yet, are you? Or did you win your, let's see, you know, you, you won the miners game, but then lost the Kagi. Is that what happened? Guys. Okay, top two go in. Okay, yeah. So you still so you still are playing. You're not you're not out yet, or do you have to just go undefeated in Swiss? Because that makes me feel like it's not true Swiss. Okay, just trying to get caught up on what's happening here. So JDG is getting to check here um, with that transporter platform. The Sacroalien also killing off that Charette to get that Amber back. Did see the fight ability off of the Sacro Alien. Let's see. But we don't get any information off of that. And then a particle sweep to go to seven. And so we've seen a lot of the steal happen already. So, and this Dodger having damage on it means it's not going to be getting any stealing. Could get another Miasma here just to slow things down. And we do see Shadows called again. Okay, so you can maybe get in with a 2-1. Ooh, do see the Pawn Sacrifice and then a Relentless Whispers and the Miasma. So, good man getting to check here. This is a this is a Barn Burner deck. Um, but we have seen a lot of that Shadows go now. And again, this is kind of the point where uh, Chandra is <laughs> probably usually at this point most of the time in games and then still comes back and does these kind of Crazy wins. We'll see what the sorry turn looks like here. We have not seen. We've only seen one one sorry card total so far, uh, and a couple cards archived. So should be a pretty strong turnaround here for JDG. Getting the citizen Shrix down, getting that Amphora down. That is just so strong in Chandra. So we will see the key stopped here. And then we see the spoils. Uh, all of it going on Shrix makes me think that the exile is coming. And again, with no, no scaling control in Lee Kim, this could be pretty rough. Uh, pretty rough turnaround for Kidman. But so far, no exile played. I don't know if there's a chance of getting... Oh, there it is. Okay. So there's the exile uh using that chant of hubris to get one more capture onto the shrix and then getting one amber on the ludo so that he can ward it with the ancient power also going up to eight amber here so this is uh turning quickly for uh jdg into jdg's favor but again this is this is more kind of where uh chandra usually kind of plays from it has a little bit of a slow start as it's getting the setup going and then just the exile play i mean seven amber i really i, I thought kidman had eight amber at the start of that turn or was it just seven? Oh yeah it's just seven all seven of that amber getting captured stolen and then shipped across so that jdg can get it later very very rough um those ammonia clouds and everything for uh also not looking great that just gives that amber right away Yeah, and not, not really a whole lot of other Amber control here for Kidman outside of the e Hammer, which is just a stall, and then the Lash, which is not down yet. Uh, both the Shaffles and the Charette are gone. And not really enough, anything in Mars either. Um, the Deep Probes are really disruptive, but looks like they came a little too late. It's going to be 
interesting to see like this is where seeing the hands would have been interesting really cool because he did take a really strong shadows turn here but you kind of wonder if he had one of those uh one of those deep probes that turn to be able to remove the Shrix before that turn happened could have been a much different game here, but we'll see. We'll see if that uh, becomes relevant in game two. Uh, this one's obviously not over yet, but very, very big um, advantage here to JDG now. As uh, that six amber does end up going over, um, Hitman just deciding it's worth it to do the ammonia clouds anyways to strip the ward and get rid of the munchling. JG going into Star Alliance now, getting some more creatures down. Again, so much of this uh, Star Alliance is just got just boosted so much by having this transporter platform down to get all those pips. Just really cycling more and everything. It's it's pretty nasty. See why the deck and the pilot both made it very very far. So be interesting to see if this game ends up getting to go to uh, game three if Kidman is able to pilot Chandra similarly. Okay, so we do have the Lash coming down now, which is very important for Kidman if he wants to kind of be able to keep JDG off of that last key. JDG is going to get to forge here. That key hammer missed that. Oh, JDG just reforged. Okay, so yeah, we might be able to Lash for key two now instead of key three. Except JG has that animator. Oh, uh, and he's gonna bouncing death cork to just remove it off the board. So no hopes of being able to tax the next key here for Kidman. Oh, it's such a cool card. I love I love animator. I don't know if I have any decks that are good with it, but it's awesome. <laughs> and in this deck especially, it can just do so many different things, both defensively and offensively. Welcome in Fudgenator. Uh, thank you again so much for running the league. Again. I would have loved to do better but i'm always happy to get to um, do these casts as well especially one that just kind of ends the long week waiting for the holiday uh, this is a great way to end it to see some awesome key forge okay so we go back into this here for kidmen just kind of continue to develop the board get some more value of their own jg still on the five cards didn't have any creatures to put down with that uh bouncing death quirk to be able to kill this succubus as well and just realize things are really small see if i can zoom this in a little bit I like using the zoom function but should have should have fixed it maybe between games i'll go in and change my settings to make things a little bit bigger okay so jdg gets back into sorry in here gets a galea tops down practice ludo still has that amber on it so able again to get the ward with the ancient power on there just have a really quick nerve blast and discarding a bad penny on Kidman's side. Uh, even that, Kidman not hitting the Dust Imp, choosing to get the reward off the Ludo instead. Just again, the threat of that Ludo is huge with the Amphora down. But only one Amber left for JDG to get into check here. Uh, and no recycle yet for Kidman. So, wow, that got so big. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely go through and uh, fix some of the uh, sizing after this game. Okay, so we've got the tension coil coming down. Again, just so much value off the transporter platform with that detention coil, getting the amber and the draw. Now we're going to be able to play that probably on the dust imp just to keep it from uh, just running itself into one of these creatures. But we'll see. There's a chance you just keep it on. Yeah, just keeps it on the uh, secure droid to be able to use it again next turn with that transporter platform. Not really a need to put it on the um, dust imp right now. And then we do have a Quintrino Flux to blow up that succubus. And she just did discard the Quixel Stone. I think that's fair in this match. Um, Lee Kim is not a creature heavy deck. What it's trying to do so it's not really helping a whole lot at this point okay so it does have a few more answers in shadows uh just to do a little bit more stealing there hitting that um dust imp as well to get a bigger amber burst with the relentless whispers and the urchin just barely keeping jdg off key again but you gotta think you're gonna run out of answers pretty soon here without that lash uh, and still no cycle so 
still none of your dis answers uh, coming back out either. All right, so JDG goes right back into Star Alliance. Again, just going to get so much value off of doing some of this bouncing and stuff and just cycling, uh, getting some filtering with the survey. And just going to reap out here. Again, no scaling control, so really stopping you from just going as far as you can. Sakharulian is fighting just to get the fightability there just for more uh, cycle filtering. I do love the fight abilities on the aliens. Um, one of my favorite mutants from that cycle for sure. Or mutant traits, I guess. I don't know how you call that. Abilities. And is able to just kill the uh, urchin as well. Okay, so we've got some bursting combo coming from the Mars there, but it is not enough to stop that key. And so we do have the first game being taken by JDG. Oops. This really quick. Save. Game. That work or do I need to refresh? I think I share. All right, so we're on for game two. Swap decks. Uh, Kid Man's got. Chandra, which is is not an easy deck to pilot. Um, it's a it's a very tricky deck. It has some really interesting things on how you want to handle different situations and different scenarios, and especially just knowing how to handcraft for the kind of turn that JDG was able to pull off there. So there's a reason he plays it in Maggi and also in uh, competitive play. It's just it's just that kind of deck. But he did give away some of the tricks uh, in that game one, especially with the animator, uh, just kind of some stuff there. So we'll see if Kidman is able to uh, capitalize on some of what he saw. Early survey, probably not a bad thing, getting that extra draw and then getting to discard some stuff. Hopefully he, oh, we'll see what he, we'll see what he discards. It can always be a tough one. Discards a Sacro Alien. So it's a tough call because you did see how much JG was able to use that uh, in game one. Ooh, and JG getting the ghostly hand value and then upon sacrifice for some early burst. Oh yeah, the Igor decisions. I always forget because it doesn't show the uh, legacies on here. I really wish this actually showed legacies so you could see, kind of catch your eye with those. But Igor in an MM deck is just a little bit different. And yeah, in Chandra for sure, you have to know what you're looking for and what you're okay with discarding. Hey, we do see an early Shrix, but also an early Amphora, which is scary. We are getting more of the Mars out here, including Tunk with a Squawker. So going to be able to take care of that uh, Shrix right away. So that reduces a little bit of the potency of um, the exile possibilities. But I mean, still two spoils of battle and stuff can really do it with a lot of different creatures. So just need kind of one to ship across. Still no... Uh, no deep probe. I feel like that that card should be way more impactful than we saw in game one, and I'm sure JDG knows that. So probably just going to be cycling pretty hard to try and find some of those uh key creatures. Doesn't discard artifacts, unfortunately, but um, especially just making sure that there's no sorry creatures in hand, and then keeping the board clear is going to be able to just really limit those exile plays. Uh, we do see the Lethalogica into the Igor. It looks like we didn't lose anything on the Lethalogica, which it's hard to know if that feels good or not. I think when you don't know what you're looking for, that's probably a good thing. Forge Compiler comes down. We did not see that go off in the last game. I don't know that it's 
super impactful in this. I I guess if you can get the Ludo down, maybe when your opponent forges, it's not too bad. Um, but last game, we did not see big boards for either deck, and um, Lee Kim is not exactly hurting for creature control. It's got a lot of pings, and then it's got the two ammonia clouds, and then a gateway, so huge deal. Okay, so there's our deep probe, going back into Mars, hitting Saurian. And nothing to discard, but also we see a creatureless hand for uh, Kidman XTX. That is just brutal. But we also see, well, we'll have to see if uh, Kidman has any ways of killing both of these creatures. He can kill one with a Tunk. If he can't kill the second one, then we basically know what's coming, and that's going to be uh, spoils into exile most likely. But JDG taking time, just making sure he knows exactly what's in hand because this is going to kind of come out over a couple turns. We've got some creature control with a Quintrino Flux and then Pixel Stone and Blast Shielding. Really interesting to see if Kidman ends up playing that Quixel Stone or not. Again, I don't think it's really worth it in this except just for the Amber. Um, we'll see what Kidman decides. So JDG going to check for key one choosing to kill that munchling but again there is the possibility of the exile into or the spoils of battle into exile here uh, with the igor still on the board chooses to go into star alliance so with one deep probe down there is a better chance of you finding a uh sorry creature to go with that stuff but does choose to do the quixel stone and uses it as a capture on the igor the tension coils the tongue so the tongue can't fight the igor now um seems unlikely you go back into mars at this point unless you drew the second deep probe right now already played a good amount of mars as igor is able to stay though with uh that amphora and this turn there's a real chance of being able to get a lot more uh, exile value with some of this amber on here. We do see the blast shielding. Not really doing a whole lot else besides some extra amber, but that does put Kidman up to check. Okay, and then smartly discards the Yorg just to make sure that there's always at least one spot you can play something. It did miss, uh, since you mentioned it, Fudgenator, what was discarded by the Igor. And it looks like a hedonistic intent and an opposition research. So some amber there, and again, a potential capture and a uh, exalt for the eventual exile play. But okay, so Kidman forced to Relentless Whispers his own creature because of the armor here. And then we do see a miasma, double miasma. So both miasmas are gone. Um, with JDG not even on, or Kidman not even on check yet. But here we go. Big exile play. Going to do all the capturing with uh, the chant. Uh, all of that used as capture pips from the Amphora and then sending it over. Does not get to check on this turn, which probably not a huge deal, but it is interesting. Just gives you a little bit more time if you're JDG to find something like the Lash uh, for the eventual loss of this Amber. Goes back into Mars, though. Does see that second deep probe looking for Sarian again. And again, there's no creatures in... Oh, there's one creature. There's an Infomorph. You should actually look at that. How many creatures... Does somebody know how many creatures are in Chandra? I think it's less than you would expect. Twelve? <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe those deep probes not quite as important, but except for how they can counter the exile if you hit the time right um because if you can hit it with them having no creatures on board and you hit the only starring creatures in hand it effectively turns off exile for that turn you have nothing to capture and move over all right so jdg not able to get up to check and then a quick logos turn back for kidman just getting to check there stopping some reaping we do see the Lash and the Shaffle, so that is going to be a stopped key again for uh, Kidman. Lash is down, and we don't have the Animator this time. Does choose to play another creature, though, with the Shaffles, which is interesting with the uh, Quixel Stone. So we'll see if Kidman decides to play any more creatures. Discards a Galliotops. Again, that Exile being gone already, you don't really know too much, or you don't really need it too much anymore. 
ABR jank decks, huh? Is that what you would consider, Chandra? I mean, it's a kind of an everything deck, right? You could probably almost play it, and that's probably not reversal, but... Okay, so we do see the Igor finally getting shot by a particle sweep there. Transporter platform comes down and Demo Alien on the board. Uh, we are opening up some board space for JDG here, but looking rough. Uh, we do get the disc call going back into it, going to get some taxing and then some value off the shaffles there as well. And we do see the life ward come down. Uh, what did the jank week was 13 creatures or less? Makes sense. Uh, and then we do see a gateway. So we lose the shaffles, but we do clear off some of that star line stuff. But even with the tax from the lash that turn, we still have a check for key two from Kidman XDX before they even start this turn. So let's see. Life Ward, I mean, Life Ward is just going to be hard to time. You almost want to wait until you cycle back to those deep probes. Um, but from what we saw last game, this deck just isn't going to have the time to do that. Uh, Ludo's already on the board, and you just used your gateway. But have we seen the Guilty Hearts yet? We have not. So, uh-oh, I just got booted. Still online? Am I still live, guys? Okay. I'm still here. All right, and I'm back in game. That was scary. <laughs> Do I need to refresh, though? I might do that quick. Not sure if I'm still in it. Oh, this site has been having some issues. Okay, we're back. Uh, not much else happening there on that turn anyways, so didn't miss much. Just the spoils onto the Ludo. So we do have a Shadows play, so no Guilty Hearts yet. But we do have to remember that that is an option to remove this Ludo at some point. Because it's got the Amber on it. Okay, so a Reap and then a Relentless Whispers on the Silvertooth, but still does not stop the key. Uh, if you're Kidman, you think about maybe letting this key go for JDG just to get the extra ward on Ludo. You're not going to be able to play any more creatures because of the Quixel Stone, so this is about the best value you're going to get out of it. Yeah, Chandra really does need to have a key, or uh, have creatures on the board to kind of do its Amber Control. That is a good point. JT. Um, the question is, is it kind of too late? <laughs> uh, I'll have to see. Mass abduction does nothing because there's no damage here. Just discarding a bunch of creatures. So, Light Spot did not proc the Life Ward either that turn. What stopped the key that turn? Is it their capture? Oh, yeah, it must have been one capture on the Ludo. Ooh, spoils back into it and we have recycled so there's the exile brutal just a brutal game yeah I mean, life ward is great but at this point i mean you probably do it this turn just so that uh kidman's not able to play some creatures that could eventually fight into this ludo uh because you basically have to find uh bouncing death quirk now to kill that right i guess the quintrino flux also kills it but can't even play like the urchin for value here because the Ludo is blocking you with the Quixel stone down uh, and no other creatures on board. So very rough spot for JDG at this point. Just going to try and cycle. What are we looking to get back into? Don't even really know. I mean, really you just need as much shadows and then ways to kind of keep them from having a board but i mean you just got exiled again so what do you do to stop 13 amber if this gets killed next turn i'm 
JG pondering that. <laughs> also, what options do you have left to win this game? Um, especially with still no more creatures coming down. We do have just a bunch of discarded creatures. Just not even really worried about killing this anytime soon because, like we said, it is blocking uh, JG from playing any more creatures at this point. You see a bait and switch, which is sad because it only steals uh, one there because you only had two less than your opponent. Uh, Nerve Blast has to hit the Perfectus Ludo as well, so you're basically making it almost easier for a Kidman to kill it. Um, now, something like a Particle Sweep or just a Damage Pip can remove that. But there's the BDQ anyways, and then Lethal Logica into... Ooh, rough stuff lost, but uh, discards the Igor anyways. Yeah, there's no need to play creatures at this point. Not a whole lot JG can do. We could see the Charette come down, but that still leaves you away, but just the Dust Imp. There you go. So, I mean, JG probably was building this hand for a little bit with some of this uh, disc stuff because that is a pretty big swingy turn, but just wasn't able to play it because uh, probably didn't have the Charette for a while. This actually stopped the check. Unfortunately. All right. So, <laughs> predictions on bidding. What do we think is going to happen here? Like, it's it's got to be a lot, right? But, like, it's so tricky because Chandra takes time to set up. And this deck can for sure burst. And if you do time those... Uh, Okay, so they're going to make a new one. If you do time those um, deep probes correctly while Chandra is on uh, chains and you're getting just consistent speed, you could just outrace Chandra really quickly. Like, I don't know if it takes a ton of chains to do that. It just takes a good draw and some early pressure. Um, but I think I'm also not fantastic at chain bidding at this point. <laughs> so... I don't know if I'm the best one to say for sure. I could see we got people playing. Uh, score of the first. No, there was one key forged for uh, Hidman on the first game. I don't think he got the second. Someone can correct me. But I think I think he stayed at one. But definitely got that first one really fast. With a lot of shadows uh, stealing and stuff. Also, welcome to Incarnage. Very fast, seven chains for Kidmen. I think that's already making it pretty tough, just because the other deck, you know, it's a Coda deck. It can just, if it draws right, it could just outrace before Chandra has time to set up, especially if Chandra misses some of those uh, artifacts, like do you play the Lethalogic early on and stuff, so... It's uh I don't know. I don't I don't think it's super easy. It's it's a tricky bid for sure. But JDG goes up to nine. He is very confident. He's more confident on nine chains with Chandra than many of us would be, but sounds good. And glad you're on vacation. I also am starting mine until January 2nd. So this is I was just saying, this is a fantastic way to start. Literally logged off of work, hopped on here, and got this going so ooh, so the 10 chains from kidman xdx and i like it because I, I you can tell jg wants to play chandra uh going straight from seven to nine there like there's you know there's comfort there with chains but i, I gotta be thinking one of these like we're not gonna get too much higher than 10 i would expect Chandra does have, how many drop hips is it? Three, four? That's four, two from Animator, two from Amphora. Five, is it? There might be a fifth one on there. Um, and not a lot of stuff that just sits on board and gets you value, but 
Okay, so Kidman takes Chandra on 10 chains. Oh, it's just so tough. Uh, I'm really excited to see how this plays out, but um, I don't know. It, this is going to be... Uh, let's see, loser of the last... Th that's correct. Does anyone know? <laughs> should remember this thanks JT Any remake possible? Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think that's usually, that's generally correct. Uh, other deck is, you can see it on there, Leakim Runply Guardian. Very coda name with just a bunch of made up words. <laughs> this Mars Shadows with double deep probe, which I'm a fan. Deep probe is an awesome tech card. When I throw this on YouTube, I'll go ahead and link both of the decks as well. Ooh, JG starts off with a life ward. Um, like JT was saying, that could be. Very huge card for forcing a key through against Andra. But we have some early creatures. Medina has not hit the board in any of the last two games. So this is our first year. It's going to be interesting to see if JDG just leaves that there for a while because that can be really good or really bad for you. Uh, depending on what the... Yeah, three one four card hand is not bad. Not a bad start for Chandra there. Um, Kidman definitely happy to see that. Did sure. that get an amber on it? What am I missing? Oh, he reaped uh, from the Quintina there. Okay, so do you see a bouncing death quirk just to get rid of the Quintina because Quintina does also represent a really big threat for the exile potential because you can exile. Okay, and just like last game, JG always going to be deep probing for Sarian. Doesn't hit any. Oh, it does hit the Ludo. Okay, so that is actually a big deal there. Um, but pressure is on just to remove this gal Galliotops. There's actually not a ton of ways to do that in this deck. Uh, you need to get some damage on it so you can mass abduction it. Or find that gateway otherwise this is just gonna sit there for a while transporter platform comes down with the sacro alien that sacro alien is allowed to hang out for a bit that could represent a lot of extra efficiency to get kidmen back uh in the game here do you have the blast shielding as well still can't fight into the dominator quite yet but um the transporter platform like jg needs to remove that very soon JG at 5 Amber though, so could definitely threaten this turn, especially if he decides to go with the Life Ward. This Combat Pheromones with these guys down here is also really good. Um, so we've seen Bouncing Death Quirk already. So this is where this is where Chandra's just so hard. Bouncing Death Quirk is a very important removal card for Chandra. Like it does not have, aside from the Quintrino Flux, it does not have much else that is just straight destroy something. Okay, so JG changing up the tactics, deep probing for Logos that time. Um, does hit an Igor and a Munchling, so down to a two card hand for Kidman. Does not feel great. Probably going to get to see some more uh, Star Alliance bouncing, but you basically have to find some removal for this board now. Uh, and I think JG knows that. JG seeing the um, bouncing Death Quirk come down. And basically just go wild with this. Okay, so. C 
see a quick Sarian call here into the Hedonistic Intent. Just going to get some Amber piled up on JG's creatures. We do see the Forge, which does pop the Forge compiler. So these wards are, again, important because removing this is just a little bit tougher now. We are at check, which is... Now, it doesn't really force JG into anything because we have this combat pheromones. If you really want to stop the key, you can just use the um, Mind Warper. Okay, thanks for the extra confirmation there, Fudge. I, uh, streamer brain, right? Like you just, you, you double think everything <laughs> as soon as you're here. All right, so we got a disc call. We have not seen this yet from JDG. A lot of things we could see. The Guilty Hearts is really bad at this point. Uh, we're going to see combat pheromones for the Dominator and the Mind Warper. So Dominator probably just going to fight the ward off. We'll see. The ward here is uh, it's actually really good. Well, and Jade, or, uh, Kidman is on five cards now, so there's a little bit more um, flexibility. We are seeing the Amber put on Sacra Alien. Even this is hard, right? Because this could still get exiled if you don't kill it this turn. But we're able to remove the ward with the Gangu there. Uh, doesn't fight it, though. Fights into... Ooh, does play the Guilty Hearts. Okay, so we're giving Kidman... Oh, not giving the key because we also have the Charette. All right, so that's a pretty brutal turn there. Um, from JDG, we could see the Life Ward popped here too, which would be just uh, really, really rough for a Kidman to come back from. Probably thinking through that right now. Decides not to pop it. Just gonna not a check yet. So probably just gonna wait until you know it's that like really yeah. Still wait on Life Ward until you're read in check and you really want to force that through. That is really tough because I, I if you can't play creatures with Chandra this turn though like how much does that stop you from doing so much because so much of what it does is creature based um like even with the transporter platform here like is forcing a key better than just the the pressure value that stopping this turn that just happened from happening would be so anyways just gonna trust jdg <laughs> knows how to play against Chandra so uh, okay, so we see a bait and switch here. Very fast call into shadows. Not going to deal with uh, Dame Alien here unless we have a couple more pings from shadows. What have we seen already? So we might have Relentless Whispers, but those can't. Need another ping on this. What do we have? Could be a Pawn Sacrifice uh, on the Dust Imp would be pretty good here too. Just thinking through exactly how to do this because uh, you might have to sacrifice a lot of your own creatures this turn which might be worth it but and there's the relentless whispers again probably just gonna ooh just using it for the damage on the demo alien and then playing the second one to finish it off on sacrifice to blow up the dust imp and kill the yorg there and there's life ward so yeah lots of pressure we do get a key forge for kidman but unable to play creatures we do see the quixel stone come down now no discards either so just that dropping a change still on five and JG already in check for key three here and just gonna go into Mars and or Amber. Where are we at on the Amber control? So we've seen one spoils. Have to be the other spoils plus uh Amphora plus tricks. There's the Amphora. We gotta draw off that. Got the Ludo with a capture. Alright. So might be able to hold off the key this turn. Power. Does not have it. There you go. Ten key, or ten chains, just a little bit too much.
Interesting. Yeah, it's that's tough. It's a really tough call because again, like I was saying, I think the speed of this just can put uh, Chandra on the back foot and not able to kind of get it set up going. Um, hard to know if there's anything that have even done differently. Um, chain bidding is just a tough art, especially when it's again it's not your deck. Uh, GDG obviously very practiced with Chandra in doing that, but um, I think it's raw amber there, kind of winning out a little bit against a deck that just kind of got. A bit slowed down so awesome well they're already out uh like i said we're not going to do um a interview this time we'll leave that for sort of the higher level games because i need to get some dinner and get on with my holiday break but thank you all so much for watching and hanging out we'll get this posted i guess we'll give it to murph for posting on youtube at some point but um you can always check it out on the vod on here and uh yeah Thanks for thanks for letting me stream. I didn't mean hi you know what I meant. Uh after the Swiss, so just like semifinals and finals. Upper cut, higher up cut. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. These are obviously great players who have gotten to this uh level. Like I said, the the round robin games were tough. These were some really tough divisions this season. So congrats to both of them for making it here. And no one's out yet, right? Uh, everyone's still got the round robin games to keep going like saying earlier um as long as you're x and one you still have a shot so hopefully we'll see both of these players again but anyways that is it thank you so much for hanging out and uh yeah have a fantastic christmas if we don't see y'all again till then new year's and all that so we will see you later bye